Okay, um, I want to, uh, kind of give a, it's kind of a partial rant, and it's, it's also, uh, informative, I believe. I don't think you're going to find this information, uh, very easily. However, this, uh, this whole pandemic started with the coronavirus which we now know started in uh, in China uh, and it was as a result of uh, a communist government attempting to take control of a growing group of protesters uh, that were beginning to become violent and uh, they were also uh, bringing harm to the innocent people that had that had nothing to do with it and they wanted nothing to do with it um, and uh, not only that the peaceful people have don't have any desire to fight or uh, or rebel against the communist government of China. Uh, that is the government that they're comfortable with. Um, and they also like the fact that that particular brand of communism protects their traditions and customs. Uh, and so... Uh, the coronavirus was designed specifically to make people believe, specifically protesters, that there was a new deadly virus that uh, needed to have a cure uh, before it spread and started killing masses of people in China. Now keep in mind that this was only for China. Uh, and, uh, and so this was directed towards the protesters and uh, it is quite possible that some of the peaceful members of the public uh, were clued in on it and they were given the opportunity to participate. So that means that those who were given the opportunity to participate would would pose as actors and then they would sell that this this was a real disease and they would be running around with masks and gloves and they would be saying that they tested positive and that the government provided the cure, and so what you what you see basically is actors going in with masks and gloves, and coming out, recovering, and removing the masks and gloves, and going back to their normal lives. Uh, and and so this would this would lead protesters to believe that they're sick or they would be suspected of being sick or, or they would be scared of each other being sick and people would start pointing at one another um, and of course the um, the symptoms are rather easy Sniffly nose, watery eyes, phlegm in the throat. These are the same symptoms that belong to colds and allergies. Okay. Uh, the flu symptoms are watery eyes, stuffy nose, phlegm in the throat, fatigue, headache, loss of appetite, temperature. Okay. That's flu. All right, coronavirus 
It's the same thing. Watery eyes, runny nose, phlegm. The cold. Watery eyes, runny nose, phlegm. There is no difference between a cold and a and and a and a the one who virus or whatever it is. Okay? No difference. The only test is actually for somebody to go to the hospital and say, I have it. And hopefully the Chinese government would hope that this was a protester seeking the government's help for a treatment. Okay? Uh, so if this guy is identified as a protester, then with then quote unquote treatment would be withheld and then they would be forced to wear a mask and gloves to identify them and to stay away from them. In other words, it's a warning. Okay? It's it's a way of marking a person of interest. All right? Gloves and mask. Okay, now China has influence. It has the most influence over the World Health Organization, which should not actually be the case. The United States funds the lion's share of the World Health Organization. Therefore, the CDC should be doing its own studies and its own research and should be the primary influence, or not the primary, but it should have the most influence in the World Health Organization since the United States provides the lion's share of the money. However, that's not the case. China has influence over the World Health Organization. The World Health Organization uh, does the studies and research in accordance with China's directives. And then the CDC gets its information from the World, uh, the World Health Organization. In other words, the Center for Diseases and Control in the United States is basically saying this research has already been done for us by the World Health Organization. So let's get our information from them. And then we'll pass this information on instead of actually doing their own research on the disease. All right. So the first thing we need to do is we need to cut and run from World Health Organization. And the second thing we need to do is get rid of the Obama era doctors that are in charge of the CDC in the United States. And put fresh folks in there that have a conservative point of view who don't have a specific monetary interest other than this is my job. I do this for a living. And they also understand the importance of truthful research and reporting on their findings. What I'm finding through this is that there are nine states which have chosen not to stay at home or shelter in place because they have their own doctors who have the ability to research and decipher whether this is an actual threat or not. And these governors trust these doctors, they're conservative doctors, and they know that they're not going to mislead the public and they're not going to mislead the governors. Uh, and so these nine states have actually made the right call. This is not a pandemic. This is not something that is going to bring harm to their population and their state. And therefore, they decided not to take the centers of disease control 
directive uh, or suggestion to shelter in place. Uh, and that is the wonder of Amendment 10, states' rights. Okay, we are a decentralized government. Okay, uh, the federal government can create guidelines. Okay, uh, and the federal government, yes, does have a federal law that presides over the uh, 50 states. Uh, so long as it's constitutional and the state constitution agrees with that federal law. But Amendment 10 states that, uh, that the states may also look at it constitutionally to ensure that if they reject something from the federal government that it's constitutional for them to do so and not illegal. Now, I happen to disagree with making marijuana legal in some states. Um, I believe that illegal drugs should never be legalized because it supports drug trafficking. Okay? So now you get to these other states which are saying, which are ordering shelter in place because they're getting their primary information from the Centers for Disease Control. Now remember, the Centers for Disease Control believes that the World Health Organization is at the top of the food chain. That's just the wrong answer for Americans. Americans have its own law, the Constitution, the U.S. Code, and the U.S. Code of Commerce. It has its own laws to enforce. America is a sovereign nation. And each of the 50 states are sovereign in their rule over their states so long as it's constitutional for them to do so. So therefore, if the CDC is getting most of its information from the World Health Organization and the states are getting their information from the CDC rather than doing the research for themselves, utilizing doctors who don't have an interest one way or another financially to arrive at the correct answers, then basically... What these states are doing is setting up the U.S. for a global one world government and the global one world government would be controlled by medical mandate. Our forefathers designed the United States to be sovereign unto itself and our forefathers, starting with Hamilton, designed a financial system that would kick us into economic prosperity, a sustaining American prosperity. Uh, and our forefathers ensured that our states had sovereign governance over their populations for this specific reason to prevent religious and governmental tyranny I just needed to make that comment because the United States needs to be doing its own research and, and obtaining its own information rather than borrowing information from other nations and making it apply to the United States.
without doing their own research. That's just wrong. As for the shelter in place and uh, social distancing, that should be a decision that's made by the individual and by the families and community. Because individuals also are sovereign under the Constitution and there is a head of household over each household who makes the decisions for that household. There is are parents for each household which decide who to hang out with and who not to hang out with and who to allow their children to hang out with and what activities they will do in community. So therefore, telling people to socially distance themselves from one another frustrates the sovereignty. And then not only that, it prevents community immunization. What happens when you have a man and a wife come together and, well, you know they've made love and they've been together, they have, uh, they're faithful to one another and they have kids. Well, if they have two kids, then they've got immunity to diseases times four. And then the kids are constantly evolving in their, uh, in their immunity as they grow up. And so that becomes an ironclad immunity for that family. Uh, if you take two or three families and you put them together in community... The kids are playing together, they, they all play cards, they drink together, they eat after each other, they drink after each other, they're, they're passing stuff around. Okay, so if you have three families with an average of two children each, guess what? That's immunity times four, plus the growing immune systems of the children. Okay, so... Uh, the social distancing is actually damaging a community's ability to fight this disease. To fight any disease, as a matter of fact. And what you need to understand now, I'm prior military, so I understand military doctrine. Military doctrine, whether it is communist or capitalist, it does not matter, it does not care, it is the same everywhere. If you want to conquer a nation, you isolate the people, you misinform the people, you divide the people, and then you get them creating factions. Once you've got them creating factions, then you can begin brainwashing the individual factions and they will fight one another. Once they have fought each other, once, they, once, once you've got them fighting each other, then this enemy element will come in and say, hey, look, we've got the solution to the problem. Do this. And it won't be an American solution. And the next thing you know, we're being taken over by an ideolo ideology that does not belong to the United States. And right now we're embracing a Chinese philosophy. And that is a horrible mistake. Thank you very much.